Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I wanted to do a quick video showing how to use MinReal in MATLAB to perform transfer function poll zero cancellation. All right, so to set the stage for this, let's talk about poll zero cancellation for a few minutes. Now, the idea with poll zero cancellation is that if we have our transfer function and we write it in our standard factored format of S plus Z1, S plus Z2, all the way up to S plus ZM, so there are M zeros, and then you have an S plus P1, S plus P2, all the way up to an S plus PN for N polls. Okay? Now, you can see that when we write it in this format, if any of these Z terms are the same numerical value as any of these P terms, you've got the same factor in the numerator and the denominator, and they should cancel out. So for example, what if Z1 was exactly the same number as P2? Then this term will cancel with this term here. And we end up with a smaller transfer function or a more minimal realization of the transfer function. Okay, so while this is pretty obvious, the problem arises if we have a situation where maybe instead of having the transfer function written in this nice factored form, what if you have the transfer function in polynomial form? So for example, let's look at a transfer function. I'm going to call it g1 of s here. What if this was given by uh, s squared plus 3s plus 2 all over s cubed plus 2s squared minus 11s minus 12. Okay, by looking at this right now, I don't think you could tell me if there is any pole zero cancellation going on. We actually have to factor this. So what I'm gonna do here is let's run over to Mathematica here or whatever your root finding tool you want and solve for the roots of the, the, the numerator and the denominator and factor this guy out. And you can show that this could alternatively be written as the numerator, you could write this as um, s plus two s plus 1 all over s uh, plus 4, s plus 1, s minus 3. Okay? So you see here that there is a 0 here at s is equal to minus 1, and there's the exact same pole here at s is equal to minus 1. So these terms should cancel out here, and the minimal realization of this transfer function should be s plus 2 all over s plus 4 s minus 3 okay now the question would be is MATLAB or some other numerical tool going to be able to perform this calculation or this pole zero cancellation for you right off the bat let's go over to MATLAB and see what happens all right so here we are in MATLAB let's go ahead and explore how to use minreal to perform Pull zero cancellation. So we'll start with our normal clear CLC close all. Okay, let's look here at maybe example one here, right? Where we have the t transfer function in polynomial format, right? So I think we had a numerator polynomial of 1, 3, 2, and then a denominator polynomial of 1, 2, minus 11, and minus 12 here, right? So we can go ahead and make our transfer function using the TF like uh, function like usual, okay? And uh, I think we're good to go here. So let's go ahead and run this script here. And you see it stores the transfer function in this format here where you see it did not perform any of this pole zero cancellation, right? We still have three poles at the origin or in the denominator and two zeros in the numerator. In fact, if we go ahead and check here the roots of the numerator and the roots of the denominator, Right? We should get the result we just talked about here, right? Where you see that there are two zeros here and three poles. And yeah, look at this. There's a pole and a zero at the exact same location. If you really want to drive that fact home, let's look at a pole zero map of G1 here. So if I look at this and run that script and I'll pull over the pole zero map, you see here's all of our poles and zeros just like we expected. And look at this guy right here. This is the issue here or the problem. Look at this. There is a pole and a zero that are exactly on top of each other here at s is equal to minus one here. Why didn't MATLAB cancel those out? Well, that's exactly where uh, minreal comes in. So there's a function, right? Help minreal stands for minimal realization here. So it basically performs pole zero cancellation. So what we want to do here is let's go ahead and just say uh, g1 minimal is minreal of g1 
Okay, so now if we run this again, we see, ah, uh, look at this. Now it has gone ahead and done the pull zero cancellation. So if I go and say figure PZ map of G1 minimal and run this again, we can compare the two one next to the other. I guess we could if I spelled it right. Let's try that again. Uh, run that again. Okay, great. So here is the original pull zero map of G1, and here is the minimal representation of it. And you can kind of see they are exactly the same, except the minimal representation has gone ahead and done this cancellation at S equals minus one exactly like we would expect. Now, you might even think, all right, maybe this was just a problem because we use this TF function to generate our transfer function. Let's look at how about example two. What if you use ZPK to make a uh, tr uh, dynamic system? Right? We said ZBK was another way you could define effectively a transfer function. So let's do the same example here. So we said, okay, there were zeros at minus 2 and minus 1, and there were poles at, um, I think it was minus 4, minus 1, and 3, and the K for this system is just 1. So we could make another function, let's call it G2, which is just ZBK of Z2, P2, K2. This is exactly the same thing. So G1 and G2 are effectively the same uh, transfer function, right? So we'll do the same thing like we did earlier, figure PZ map of G2. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. And you would think MATLAB should be able to realize, yeah, there's a, <coughs> there's a zero right here at minus one, there's a pole there right at minus one, but for some silly reason, again, you look at this, here's the zero at S equals minus one, here's the pole at S is equal to minus uh, one, Here's the pole zero map when I do C, uh, pole, uh, PZ map on G2, which is the ZPK version of that transfer function. And again, there's the pole and zero sitting right on top of each other. It wasn't canceled out. So again, we need to go ahead and make a G2 minimal, which is just the min real version of G2. So that should hopefully perform the cancellation. Let's run this again. And here we go, look at this. Now the minimal version of the transfer function has gone ahead and done the cancellation appropriately. Okay, where else might you run into this problem here when using MATLAB? How about, let's look at example three here. This is when we are composing transfer functions. And let's first look at this in series. So what I mean by that is, uh, let's consider a very simple block diagram architecture here where you've got basically two transfer functions in series. Let's call this guy uh, G3, and let's call this one G4, okay? And let's go ahead and say, uh, what can we use? How about G3 of S? Let's just make this guy uh, S plus one all over S plus two, S plus three. And let's make G4 something similar here of S plus two all over S plus one, S plus three. Okay, so you might ask yourself the question, what's the closed loop or the simplified block diagram of these two in series, right? Well, from our block diagram algebra discussion, we know that this is just going to be a single transfer function of G4 times G3, right? Let's call this thing T1 of S, right? That's our closed loop transfer function. So what we see here is T1 of S, it's just going to be G4 and G3 multiplied together here. So this is going to be S plus 2 all over S plus 1 times S plus 3. That's G4 times G3, which was S plus 1 all over S plus 2, S plus 3. Okay? So the thing to take away from this is, again, notice G3 and G4 by themselves, they are minimal realizations of the transfer functions, right? There's no cancellation going on by themselves. But when you compose them together like this, we notice that, okay, this zero from G3 will cancel this pull from G1, uh, G4, and this zero from G4 should cancel this pull from G3. So really, at the end of the day, the minimal realization of this entire system should just be one over S plus three squared, right? Okay, well, uh, let's go ahead and see if uh, we need to use min real again in MATLAB when we're composing functions together in series. 
All right, so let's go ahead and augment our script here with example number three that we just looked at on the board here, where we want to look at composing transfer functions in series, right? So we go need, or we're going to need to go make a G3 and a G4. So um, in the interest of time, I've just prepared this off screen, and you can see this is basically what we talked about on the board here, right? G3 has a zero at minus one and a pole at minus two and minus three, and G4 here has a zero at minus two and a pole at minus one and minus 3. So now when we compose these things together and we said t1 that was just g4 times g3 and we run this we're going to see that um, again uh, unfortunately MATLAB did not go ahead and do the cancellation so really what we should be doing here is again making a t1 minimal fun uh, variable and use the min real function on t1 to compute the minimal realization of that transfer function. And now, here we are. That looks beautiful. Uh, it has canceled the poles and zeros appropriately. OK, let's look at example four, uh, which is another type of architecture where you might encounter this problem of needing to do minimal realization. So let's keep the exact same G3 that we had earlier. But now, let's put this thing in a feedback loop here, a simple Unity game feedback system, right? Something like this. So again, we see that theoretically the closed loop transfer function of this guy, right? If you remember your block diagram algebra, that should just be G3 all over one plus G3, right? So uh, let's call this now, I don't know, how about T2 of S, okay? So in this case, T2 of S, if you go ahead and plug in this G3 into this algebraic expression and you do it algebraically, right, or you do it on paper or in Mathematica, I think what you'll come out with this is it should be uh, S plus 1 all over S squared plus 6S plus 7. Right, which again makes sense, right? You started out with a second order system. Uh, you just put it in a simple feedback loop, right? There's no other states, there's no other dynamics. So at the end of the day, you should still have two poles here, right? You should still have a second order denominator. Well, let's run over to MATLAB again and perform this operation of G3 over one plus G3 and see what happens. Okay, so let's do example four, which was again composing TFs, but now in feedback, right? So we're gonna use the same G3 here, and I think we said the closed loop characteristic, uh, the closed loop system, right, was G3 over one plus G3. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And we see uh, what the, again, this should hopefully go clang immediately in your head, right? We had a simple feedback system with a second order plant here. How in the world does it somehow turn out that you've got a uh, fourth order system coming out of this? And again, you can see from inspection that the problem here is a lack of pull zero cancellation. So again, the min real function comes in real handy in this situation because we can now use it to clean up and perform that cancellation here. So again, when you're working with transfer functions in MATLAB, you really want to be thinking about working with minreal as well. And now, here we go. We end up with the appropriate transfer function that we uh, are expecting here. Of course, this is factored here. I think what we had on the board was in polynomial, but you'll see that it's basically the same thing. Okay, let's look at maybe one more situation where this is helpful. Let's call this maybe example five. And uh, for lack of a better term, let's call it, how about numerical round off? Okay, so the concept here is, okay, all the previous situations we looked at, there was exact pole zero cancellation here. I mean, down to machine precision, it was exact, right? But what if you had a transfer function, let's call it G5, that maybe you obtained from experimental data here or it was... Uh, built up with experimental values that you grabbed in the lab, and it's not precise. So maybe it's something like S squared plus, you know, 3.003S plus 2.006, right? And then the denominator is something like S cubed plus 8.001S squared plus 19.007S plus 12.012, right? Okay, if you were to factor this guy out, you would end up with something like S plus 1.003 and then S plus 2 on the top. And then in the denominator, you'd end up with S plus uh, 1.001 1 .001, and then S plus 3 and then an S plus 4. Okay, 
So from inspection, you can see here that because we obtained this from numerical data that we acquired that was imprecise, that was maybe measured experimentally, not everything came out exact. Look at these two poles and or this, this zero and this pole. They are really, really close to each other, right? If we were to plot this in a pole zero map, right? These, uh, you've got a pole here, uh, sorry, a pole here at minus 1.001 and then you've got this zero at minus 1.003 so this distance is really small like 0 0.002 right so I effectively think you probably want to cancel this here um, because they're effectively overlapping. This is probably just some factor uh, that the numerical roundoff error when you collected the data yielded that they don't exactly line up, but you'd like to cancel them. So let's go over to uh, MATLAB again and see how MinReal can, can take care of this. Again, remember here, I'm going to come back to this in a second, the distance between these two pole, this pole and zero is about 0.002 in the Euclidean uh, space if you're looking at this uh, imaginary plane. All right, so let's go ahead and start in example five, which we call numerical round off. Um, okay, so let's make our transfer function uh, for G5. And again, to avoid me just actually typing it all in and taking time, I'm just gonna use what I prepared off screen. So I'm gonna use this in polynomial format here. So let's go ahead and make a transfer function using num5 and den5. And let's go ahead and look at the PZ map of this thing just to make sure we are all on the same page and that we entered everything in properly. So let me pull it over here, and here's the pole zero map of G5. And again, if we start zooming into this, we'll see that these pole and zero, they're, they're, they're close, but they're not exact, right? They're not the same thing. So if we go ahead and try to use minreal on G5 to make a G5 minimal, right? Let's go ahead and see what happens. So right now, if you notice, it didn't do it, right? It did not cancel it. G5 and G5 minimal are the exact same thing, which is absolutely correct, right? They are not actually on top of each other, so it really shouldn't have done this. So if we look at the help for MinReal, though, you'll notice here that you can put in an optional second parameter which specifies a tolerance to be used for this pull zero cancellation. Now, what's a little bit interesting about this here is this tolerance... You know, at least to me, I would think this is the Euclidean distance between a pole and a zero to make a cancellation occur. But if I use something like 0 0.001, right? If you remember the distance between those two poles, maybe if I pull up the pole zero map again. Oh, here it is. Uh, shoot, it's not zoomed in. Let me, let me zoom in, right? The Euclidean distance between these poles was actually 0 0.002 away, right? These two things, this one was at minus 0.001, the other one is at 0.003, so they're actually 0.002 apart. This tolerance, though, if you put this in, this will actually allow cancellation to occur. So, for example, if I run this now, here we go. See, the G, here's the original G5, and now here's the minimal representation of that where cancellation has occurred. So, again, the thing to maybe take away is this tolerance number, you might have to play with it. It doesn't exactly represent the Euclidean distance between poles and zeros to, to, for cancellation to occur. The last thing I want to mention before we leave this topic here is, again, l let's look at MinReal here. Whoops, and again, if I could spell it right, MinReal. So MinReal will also actually do uh, pole zero cancellation for state space models here uh, and produce a minimal representation, but that's outside the scope of what we covered here today. What I covered in the topic just now is only pole zero cancellation for transfer functions here, right? So with that being said, I hope to make a video in the future where we do talk about MinReal and how it's used for state space systems, but um, in the interest of time, I don't think I want to cover it now. So let me know what you thought about the video here in the comments below here, uh, or if there's other topics that you'd like to hear about or see in MATLAB or Simulink, just let me know. Um, if you like the video, please subscribe uh, to the channel because I hope to have a lot more topics related to MATLAB, Simulink, and control systems engineering in the future. So until I catch you at one of those videos, I'll talk to you later. Bye.